agents with the South Carolina Department of Probation, Pardon, and Parole Services have two specialized caseloads program we thought we would take a look at today. The first one works with domestic violence offenders, and the other one specializes working with offenders who suffer from a mental illness. Agents Shannon Myers and Brandon Kelly sat down with lineup producer Irvin Walker to tell us more about these specialized programs. Sure. Um, in 2015, our director for probation and parole, Jerry Adger, he served on former Governor Nikki Haley's domestic violence mm -hmm. task force in South Carolina. And because South Carolina was ranked number one and number two for so many years, I think it was about 25 years with men killing women, um, it was decided through that task force that South Carolina should try to make some changes. And so what happened is we piloted a domestic violence specialized caseload program in York County, started with one agent. And then in 2017, um, legislation awarded our department $1.2 million to pilot a, a program for domestic violence. And so we started in 2017, we expanded to 11 counties and promoted 20 agents within the department to become domestic violence agents. All right, um, how does, Working with domestic violence offenders uh, differ from other offenders? Um, it's very different. Uh, research supports that domestic violence offenders need intensive supervision um, based on the conviction and the crime. And so what we do in the DV unit is we do a lot of different um, tactics and supervision guidelines to, to help with court orders and, and what the judges have ordered across the state. Um, research shows that domestic violence offenders um, have a lot of alcohol and drug abuse problems. Of course, weapons are always an issue. Um, victim contact, when no contact is allowed, is a problem. And we have noticed over the last several years with working with domestic violence offenders and that type of population that they typically have been through some kind of traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And so the difference there is the intensive supervision part of it, whereas the agent has almost weekly involvement during the duration of supervision with a domestic violence offender. And so that makes it really different and really specialized. What type of training do agents uh, get for this program? Our domestic violence agents receive uh, specialized home visit training. We usually conduct that type of training here at the academy. And that usually focuses on the agent going in the home, searching the home for any weapons. We have access to the victims where the victims are still involved with that offender, which creates a whole other dynamic to supervision. Um, we also search for alcohol and drugs. Okay. We do have a real strong policy for uh, zero tolerance for alcohol and drugs, weapons in the home, and contact with the victim where contact is not allowed. So perhaps there's been a restraining order issued, an order of protection, or no contact order from a general sessions mm -hmm. judge. We have a zero tolerance for those things. And so we also do, um, we've had strangulation training. We've had Brian Bennett from the academy sure, come and sure. do our trainings for that. And we do offer, um, one of our supervision strategies with these types of offenders is group reporting strategy. Mm -hmm. We do that type of training. Um, and that simulates an agent-led group with offenders. And it simulates kind of like an AA group where we talk about accountability and compliance and roadblocks to supervision. So if offenders are having problems with getting to class, batters intervention classes, substance abuse classes, if they're having trouble with employment, they can come into that group and kind of problem solve with other offenders and that agent while that agent is leading that group. Um, domestic violence agents, uh, what is their caseload like? Is it a heavy caseload or they have a certain amount of cases that they are responsible for? So national average for domestic violence caseload across the United States is 50. Um, our agents typically have between 40 and 50, give or take. It could be a little less, it could be just a little bit more, but we try to stay with that range of 50. And they literally supervise cases with domestic violence of high and aggravated nature conviction, DV first degree, DV second degree, and DV third degree. There will perhaps be some times where 
an offender has been charged with a domestic violence mm -hmm. but pled down to maybe an assault and battery charge, but the judge has specifically ordered a domestic violence agent on that case. And of course we will take, you know, we do supervise those cases. They're rare, but most of the time, you know, it, it can happen. Most of the time it's the other four, four convictions. Uh, and I believe it was 2018 we first spoke to you all about this program. And now it's 2023. So in five years, how has the program grown? Has it exceeded your expectations? Uh, how has the program grown? Yeah, it has exceeded, exceeded our expectations. Um, and I will say as we get started, we, we hope to go statewide in 46 counties. But again, we so give you the timeline. Uh, 2015, we started in one county mm -hmm. with one agent. Um, 2017, expanded to 11 counties with 20 agents. At that point, once courts found out that we did have specialized agents, for example, in Spartanburg, we started with three domestic violence agents and quickly had to hire two more. Mm -hmm. So we, we're now at five in Spartanburg County and Greenville County as well. But in a nutshell, we added Cherokee. And then we had to add another agent in Cherokee, so that made two. Then we went to Aiken. So as we progressed in 2018, 2019, we went to hiring and promoting five supervisors to serve those existing agents in those regions. And that was really to create program consistency, how we reward offenders, how we sanction offenders. We wanted that to be across the board in our counties to be fair and equal. And so we went to 26 agents um, and five supervisors and we are now at 35 agents and seven supervisors. So we just expanded into Florence, Sumter, Oconee, Pickens, and Berkeley County. So it has expanded and the goal is to go statewide. And how soon do you think that goal will be met? I do think within the year, we will probably add okay. several more counties actually. So that's, that's in the conversations. Very good. Brandon, um, you work with another special program at Probation, Parole, and Pardon Services that works with offenders that suffer from mental illness. Uh, tell us about that program. Yes, sir. Um, so, Director Adger, he mm -hmm. saw a need and that, you know, with this population, um, a lot of folks were coming out of SCDC uh, not having a supervision level to actually try and help these folks out. Um, so, did a feasibility study back in 2018, mm -hmm. um, and it ran to about 2020. Um, we actually became, I guess, 2021, no, 2022 in January, that's when we started the actual caseload. Mm -hmm. So we learned what we needed to from the feasibility study and things of that nature. Um, started out with four agents in six counties. Okay. Um, we do have some agents that cover multiple counties, uh, and we're looking for that severe, persistent mental illness sure. uh, individual. So with that population, um, agents go through a number of different trainings. Um, again, like I said, we are in different counties, um, and we have expanded since 2022, um, and also our goal is to be in all 46 counties eventually. Um, with a program like this, you have a lot of challenges. And uh, what are some of the challenges that you all face when dealing with these types of offenders? One of the biggest challenges is where you are, they've burnt bridges with family members, sure. with uh, other community uh, resources. So trying to figure out how to help them and get those resources for them, um, not having the family to rely on sometimes, mm -hmm. so having to think outside the box. Um, and we do know that resources from time to time, from county to county are different. So that, that's probably one of our biggest struggles. What types of uh, training, uh, extra training do uh, agents get for this program? Okay, we have some in-house training. We also have, uh, or they're required to go through the CIT, the uh, crisis uh, intervention training, mm -hmm. sure. uh, team training, and that 40 hour week long training. Um, so. They go through that. We actually bring in DMH, Department of Mental Health. Mm -hmm. uh, we bring in Day Otis to come mm -hmm. in and give us some training. Uh, 
We have some suicide awareness training or suicide training. Um, so this past year, we've gone over, say, 100 hours of specialized training. So, but yes, sir. So with this specialized training, um, it would, I would say that the uh, agent's caseload is uh, fairly heavy. <laughs> well, it's definitely um, intense. So, but we have a small caseload. So okay. um, looking at the average of active offenders on the caseload, um, you know, we look at statistics three to five percent. So it looks different, say, in Richland versus, say, like Lee County or Darlington County. Um, so you have, we don't want more than 40 on a caseload, mm -hmm. um, and that gives the agents more time to be more involved in their day-to-day -day life. Um, they see them more often. They actually assist them with going to some of their mental health appointments um, to try and get them started if they need to be re-engaged with treatment or um, you know, just to have a ride to get there, to get that initial um, meeting with the doctor or the clinician or whatnot. So smaller caseload, looking at knowing that they need more assistance, more tender love and care kind of deal. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Um, finally, either one of you can answer this. What are the benefits of having specialized agents, either for CDV or mental illness or whatever? What are some of the benefits of having specialized agents? I know with, uh, with our group, um, one of the benefits is just being the expert at your craft. Um, we really pride ourselves, I think, on training. Mm -hmm. um, I know that my agents get d domestic violence law training and policy training and um, all the extra um, more detailed type trainings, even body-worn camera training, incident report training, those things. We really try to um, get them to be the experts in their field. And one of the things that is probably different from mental health with my group of agents is I really focus on encouraging them to know the batter's intervention program curriculum. Mm -hmm. I don't require my agents to go to the classes. I don't require them to, um, you know, all I require is have some knowledge of what those offenders are going through because when you go in that home, you can have a, a healthy educational conversation on what is that offender learning and how are they applying it to new intimate partner relationships or the existing one that they're in. And that's really important. Right. Well, I would say schedule, flexibility mm -hmm. with the schedule, um, more intimate conversations in relation with the you know, offender being that smaller caseload. Um, I would think that would be. And to piggyback on what Brandon is saying, it's true. Um, I have some early riser agents, mm -hmm. and they like to get up and get out in the field and do their work, and yes. then, you know, they're finished by midday, um, sometimes early afternoon. And then I have late risers who would prefer to do something late mm -hmm. and work a little later in the evening. So right. there's a ton of flexibility. Okay. It's almost like having your own business in a way. Finally, uh, anyone wanted to get more information around the state about this, how, how could they contact or who could they contact? I know for domestic violence, if they would like to contact me, it's Shannon Myers, uh, shannon.myers at ppp.sc.gov, G-O-V. Yeah, and the same for myself, um, brandon.kelly um, at ppp.sc.gov.